In this video, I'm going to take you through the more complicated aspects of quail math. This will focus around production. So we're going to look at the amount of eggs produced if you're just doing eggs only. We're going to look at the amount of meat produced if it's just meat only. And we're going to look at them both, so meat and eggs. So we're going to look at that. If you're raising quail for other means, pets, or just to sell them, that's a different equation. So we're focused on the production here. And it can get quite complicated because obviously you can't just eat the eggs because some of them you need to keep to actually go through the batch and the batches are periodic throughout the year in terms of meat. Uh, so there's a few different equations there and we're going to look at it from the point of view of how much do you want to, for your family or for yourself. Now I work with Excel in my day job so I developed a calculator on Excel where I can key in data and it's all set up and it does all sorts of permutations, calculations through formulas which I do in my day job and it calculates it for me and it, it throws up a set of numbers which I can run through the different scenarios. Now that's just a guide so I'm going to talk you through that that uh, calculator, the quail calculator I call it. Um, happy to show you how I do that and even if you if you want um, to get a copy of it please just leave some comments down below and I can send you a copy of the file. Uh, we can get in contact that way and I'm happy for feedback because I would like to improve this calculator. I use it as a guide just to get a feel for what I'm going to do and, and see the different impacts when you play with the variables. So it's kind of an interesting way to look at it. Uh, so I'm going to talk you through that now. Okay, so here is my quail calculator. It took me a long time to create this uh, and I have used it as a guide, but it is just a guide. It gives you an idea of what you can do. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through that now. It's a little bit complicated, uh, but you, once you get used to it, it, you start to understand it and it all makes sense. Uh, so I've set it up with the calculator down here and this is where it presents all the numbers and gives you a summary of, of the, the end points that you're looking for. Uh, but I've also got some inputs so in order for it to work we need to key in some inputs. Uh, this is essential because it's all formula driven. It runs a bunch of math calculations that work out uh, ratios and output, production, eggs, meat, etc. Uh, so it's just going through some of the inputs you'll need to key these in when you first start. And I've just started off with starting hens. So if you're looking at uh, how much can my hens do, so you've already established the number that you've got. Uh, so you can key that in there. And then we've got a lay rate. So what the lay rate is, that is how many eggs your birds produce per day. So uh, And it includes a spoil rate. So what that means is eggs that um, yeah, just you can't eat or you can't incubate. So that would be ones that are cracked or too small or you know they're too dirty perhaps. Um, so there's there's those ones to exclude. So I run with about 80%. It tends to be what I get for each of my hens. Uh, they're better than chickens for that regard. Uh, so they really do put out the eggs quite quite high frequency, good production. Uh, then I look at the collection days for incubation. Uh, we recommend seven, uh, but you can do up to 10. So what happens up to seven, all eggs that are fertilized will be still fertile and still okay to go in the incubator after seven days. Uh, you can go up to 10 days, but the um, percentage of the um, fertilized eggs drops slightly, only a couple percent, but it does drop. And I tend to be able to work with seven days anyway, but you can go up to 10 if you've got a smaller amount and you want to get the incubator filled up. Uh, so hatch rate, I put in a sort of 60%. That's roughly where I end up about. Uh, because I only have a low-grade incubator. It's not cer certainly not one of the better ones out there. It's one of the cheapest you can get. That's just what I've been using because I'm trying to do this uh, at quite a low cost. Uh, so that's what I use, 60%. Uh, I have had some batches do better, but I've had some do worse. So I'm, that's just an average. Uh, I run with a mortality rate about 8%, slightly higher than that. But and it sounds like a lot. Uh, but when you think about it, if you if you hatched out 100 birds, eight of them would probably die in the first couple weeks. Uh, certainly by the time you go to grow outs, it's just you. Some of them just die, and some of them just hatch out of their eggs and in the incubator and will just fall over and die as well. Uh, there's something wrong with their internal organs and uh, various uh, various reasons. Also, when you get splay leg, uh, where they can't stand up and their legs split out, I just put them down now. I used to try and um, rescue quite a few birds, but I had a very low success rate with that. So now I'm, I'm a lot more ruthless, I suppose, and just I just end them off quickly. There's no point in them suffering, uh, so I put them down. Um... Then I've got the capacity incubator, so I've put that in because the reason for that is just to give an idea of that's how many eggs I can fit in my incubator. If, if I put a note here, if you had two incubators, you would double this. 
Uh, and then I've got actual eggs incubated. Some people don't fill up their incubator. So I just wanted to make that differential. Uh, I, f I always try to fill mine up to, to max capacity. The reason for that is I'm going to be running the electricity anyway. And I would prefer to do big batches rather than a whole heap of small batches throughout the year. I just find it's, it's, it reduces the workload because you're spreading the work over many more birds at one go rather than having to do the same task over and over again. So I, I like to do less batches, bigger batches. Uh, that's the way I run. So I try to max out the incubator. Uh, then we look at the protein in terms of the eggs. Uh, so what I've got here is um, just a comparison. It's useful because people tend to think of eggs from a chicken point of view. So you're always comparing, and especially when you're talking to friends and family and colleagues at work, they're always thinking through their minds, they're just thinking chicken eggs because that's that's the language of the world, chicken eggs, right? So what I've just done here is this little drop down. You can pick four or five. So what that means is if you've got small quail, uh, you'd want to select five. Uh, the reason for that is it takes five quail eggs to sort of match up to an average size chicken egg. Um, my eggs are a bit bigger, so I tend to sit with four. It's just the comparative, but we'll show you that how that drives out later. Uh, eggs per meal, uh, I tend to have about 12, a dozen uh, quail eggs per meal. Some people probably have less. Uh, so if you're thinking in chicken egg size, that's like two and a bit, two and a half. Uh, that's sort of what I have for a meal. And then I've got number of persons to feed. So this is where you can start to work out. If you're looking at it from a family point of view, I'll put some numbers in there that we can work with. Uh, so moving down to the meat protein, uh, how many birds you would eat at a meal. Now you can put you can put 1.5, for example. Uh, that's something you can do if you're eating one and a half birds. I sometimes do that. Um, my average, if my birds are a bit younger, I tend to butcher the roosters around six weeks, so they're a little bit younger, so I would probably eat two of those. Uh, but if they're older, and I tend to butcher the hens, that, the ones that I don't need, um, around eight to ten weeks, somewhere around there, maybe a little bit longer, and I would only eat possibly one if it was a big bird, uh, but maybe one and a half, so I just play around with that. And then again, number of pe people in your family that you want we want to eat meat and I've, I've found that some people will eat eggs but some of them just won't for moral reasons or for just for taste won't eat the meat uh, so you will get that so you can play with that uh, I've put some assumptions here uh, it does require year round lighting so this lay rate if you're trying to look at it across a year that's quite hard to maintain if you or it's impossible if you don't add natural artificial light uh, because they will drop off in winter when they have less light so it assumes year round that you're going to b provide that light to enable the lay rate to continue. Uh, if you're not doing that, then what you could do, if you're looking for yearly point of view, is do an average, and maybe that's 60% um, across the year. So I just have a, you can have a play with that. Um, but the assumption right now is that you've added that light so that consistently doing 80%. Um, and the lay rate is of kind of touched on is just an observable production rate so you you get to learn your birds and you get a feel for it um, if they're happy and they're being fed and they've got their water and everything and the bedding is quite nice and they're comfortable not fighting too much you'll get quite a high lay rate which is good uh, it also ignores my calculator just ignores replenishment of the colony so when you need to redo your roosters because maybe they're getting older they're getting less fertile uh, maybe getting up towards a year, they're getting less fertile, or they're just getting lazy. Some of the older males, uh, the roosters, just they just stop uh, mating because they just get lazy and give up on it, and they're no good when they do that. Uh, and also sick birds, so some of your birds will get sick and die, or they just will stop laying. So ordinarily, you will replace those. I haven't built into this model the replacement ratios uh, or any way to calculate that, but it is something just to keep in the back of the mind. Uh, down the bottom here, and I'll come back to this, I've put um, some targets so it's a different way to look at it uh, from what I want to be rather than what I will get. So we'll come back to that. So looking at the eggs only, based on all the data we've put in the assumptions here, you'll see you will get egg production with these 12 hens. I will get 3,504 eggs per year. That sounds like a massive amount of eggs, and it kind of is, but it really doesn't take that much to add up. It sounds like a huge number, uh, but and it always surprised me when I kept calculating is that really true uh, but it does add up when you get every day you get quite a few eggs and yeah it does add up through a year it's um 
quite staggering really and I put in the chicken egg comparison I thought that would be useful for some people and then it just works out just dividing by the numbers you've already given uh, the number of individual meals per person uh, and then per week and then the family if your family's eating as well that's just for the eggs so no, nothing else considered uh, then I looked at meat only uh, and just for consideration we've ex assumed here that the eggs are not consumed so the the reason for that is either the eggs are fed uh, to chickens or fed back to the quail or crushed up or they're put into the garden or you're eating them but they're not really the factor they're more of a byproduct so you're not focused on that the focus is meat so I'm just looking at this from the point of view of meat in this column here so we go through and look at the eggs collected per batch and that's what I want to point out when I put the capacity of the incubator and the actual eggs incubated when you do the seven days at the 80% you will only collect on average 67 so you need a top up because you've said you're gonna fill up the incubator and I do top ups because I've got friends who have quail uh, so what I do is tell them oh can I get you know 29 eggs 30 eggs uh, on pick it up on Wednesday and they'll go yeah yeah no worries and I'll tell them a few days ahead of time and so they'll keep them aside and then I can do a top up and it's good for the the breeding lines to get some extra blood from someone else and so I do a top up to get mine up uh, if I have more hens around I won't need to do as much of a top up and mine do fluctuate a little bit so that's something uh, to be aware of and then it runs through all the data you've given to give you an idea of how many will hatch out of your 96 how many mortalities you have so you'll hatch out 58 uh, you'll have five mortalities and you have uh, obviously 53 will be grow outs and then those grow outs per year so it's quite a lot of birds uh, that you're going to be dealing with and because you've decided to eat two per meal you're going to get 133 uh, that's three meals per week so if you're thinking of it as a dinner meal you, you would start to go okay I'm gonna have th well, three, three meals a week at, for dinner that's quite good um, that's where you can start planning these things it's really great for that uh, and number of family meals of two people were eating across the year uh, family meals per week so I've got some rounding here so it may look a little, little bit odd but I've had to round when you play with the numbers you'll get some ups and downs uh, but you could always fight over the last uh, drumstick <laughs> so to speak um, now I've gone down to a slightly more complicated combination of the meat and eggs so what we've done is we've run out the same formula up here for the eggs produced per year uh, and then we take out the ones that we need to incubate so you cannot eat ones that you're going to put in the incubator because you're going to hatch them out so your eggs for consumption drops down so you'll get less and remember this is where we're considering the eggs to be consumed rather than up here in the meat only we weren't even worried about them uh, but the same when we're uh, trying to incubate these these birds out to grow the meat it's the same same sort of scenario really because we're plugging in the same data so you get the same data that you have up here and the same ratios so that just brings the combination together pretty simple it just looks at both both angles for the protein now to bring it down to the meat and eggs based on targets so this is a different way of looking at it this is not to look up here at the number of birds I already have and all the data I already have this is to say I want X number of meals per week I want X number of meals uh, per year I want this this X number per of meat per week and this X number of egg meals per week so I've just played around and put two meat meals per week and five egg meals uh, and then the actual that we're going to incubate so I've, you key it in here it's similar to up the top here as well because you probably got the same incubator and again if you have two incubators running uh, some people run two incubators and stagger them so one might have been running for a week and then they start another one and then they sort of stagger them so that when you're growing out your birds you get them out of the brooder and the next lot just quickly come in uh, you can do that as well but you just double up same as up top you double up this number and you keep um, keep it moving along like that and in this scenario I've added just to help out I've added a hens per rooster ratio so you can play around with that you can make that four you can make it three uh, I, I use five um, but that's yeah that's just me uh, so that's number of hens per rooster in a colony cage okay so again same sort of uh, scenario we've, we've been able to work out the eggs per year 
and the ones that we need to incubate based on these numbers here, the targets, and that'll give you how many eggs you, you want to consume, or you can consume. Uh, down the bottom, again in the final numbers, I've, I put in here, it works out the number of batches you're required to do to hit those targets based on the amount of eggs you've keyed in over here for incubation. And then we've got number of hens required, and based on your ratio, number of roosters required, so the total quail. So it's quite handy if you haven't set up your, your um, got your set up yet, and you you know how many uh, meals you want to have. This is a good way to look at it from a target point of view. Uh, from it's a different angle. Uh, what I have then done is gone in to look at the meals. Uh, so same principles above, uh, obviously, but it's based on the target. So I'm sort of working backwards, but it still calculates out the data. Tells you talks about top ups, etc. That we talked about and it'll give you a uh, number of batches. So down here, uh, just to alliterate, I've got a self-sufficient. So we had top-ups, we it links over here to number of roosters, number of hens. Uh, but what I did add in here is a self-sufficient number of hens. So if you didn't want to go to a mates to get the top-ups, to actually hit your number of, of eggs that you want to incubate, then you would have to have more hens to produce more eggs, more fertilized eggs, and you probably need more roosters. So uh, what I did was calculate down here, if you want to be self-sufficient, uh, we're going to add an extra five hens and one extra rooster, based on these numbers here, if you want to be self-sufficient. And so there's different scenarios there. Um, it's just something to consider as well. Uh, it depends whether you've got access to extra eggs or if you don't, uh, you can buy them obviously. Um, but if you maybe you're on a rural property and you're thinking oh that's a bit of a hassle to go get some eggs or I can't be bothered talking to other people to go get them I just want to have it right there in my backyard then you want to look at that self-sufficient number uh, so then you can calculate that and what I've also added is the extra number of eggs because when you are self-sufficient with the number of hens you're going to get more eggs that aren't incubated as well uh, so you've got extra egg meals that will get produced there as well so that's something to be aware of, and then it tells you the number of quail uh, and compares it to when you're not self-sufficient, if you want to do it that way. So that's the targets. Uh, I know that's a lot of data to take in, um, but when you play around with it, you spend some time here, you key in the numbers in the yellow sections, uh, and it changes everything here. And then you have a read of it, have a play, get an idea, feel for the ratios and what outputs and production you can get and you can move forward from that. I am more than happy to provide this to people if they want to contact me directly on my channel just send me a private message and I can uh, email this to people. I would recommend you save this file down uh, as long as you, you've used Excel before it won't be a problem you're only keying data in the yellow sections and then just watching it change over here uh, so if you change data you see it changes totally over here um, yeah so it's just something that I thought would help people out. Um, but as I said, more than happy to email this to people and have a play with it. Uh, give me some feedback. I'm happy to amend this. This is just a first draft. I imagine over time I'll probably change it and make it more complicated and uh, try to tease out maybe even replenishment of the colony. Uh, I might even try to build that in at some point. Although that will be challenging, but I've, I, I tend to do analytics for a living so I can probably work it out uh, yeah I'm happy to do that uh, yeah but if if you've got any comments on that please let me know and yeah once again I'm happy to provide this just contact me and I hope it helps uh, it can be a bit daunting when you're trying to work all these things out but uh, maybe the calculator will help figure it out in your mind a bit better and you'll get an idea for what you want to do and what you can do okay that is the quail calculator